And I just want to say Donald Manahan might be the only person in the room that has a peak in Ant Antarctica named after him. <laughs> ah, you do your homework, thank you. <laughs> and my mother is really proud of that, yes. Uh, I went to see her last week. Um, I, I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I uh, want to represent on behalf of the National Science Foundation our enthusiasm for the field of evolution, comparative genomics and function and so forth. But I thought I might just spend uh, just a moment, because I know even from the brief chats this morning over coffee that somebody says, well, what do you actually do at NSF? That's not really my, my sphere of thinking. And that, of course, is why we have these kinds of meetings. It's an opportunity to look at areas of emphasis across the different agencies. So for example, at the National Science Foundation, one of our big 10 ideas, as we call them, is understanding the rules of life, predicting phenotype. And once you get into that word of predicting phenotype, there is a, a massively complicated set of approaches to this. The division that I direct at NSF, Integrative Organismal Systems, looks at this from spanning microbes to plants to animals, symbiotic systems, comparative systems, and so forth. And what we're particularly interested in is trying to understand fundamental rules of life. Perhaps a model organism will give us that insight for other more basic and applied kinds of sciences. So we actually do quite a lot across collaboration with NSF and USDA, as you might imagine, at the National Science Foundation. I think in particular I wanted to bring to your attention that there's, I believe, nine program officers here today. Uh, they're drawn, I won't have them all stand up, but you'll, you'll see them listed on your participant lists. Please make sure to, if you want to learn, know more about the details I've just described, have a chat with them. I think that's a representation of how keen we are on these kinds of collaborations, that there's about nine or ten of us here today who really want to understand and help build these kinds of bridges. Uh, to give you a specific example of understanding rules of life, uh, the, the journal Nature, I believe one of the, there's a, a writer here from Nature today, at least on the, um, I always bring this with me everywhere, just not quite, but uh, there's a wonderful write-up on April 25th of a focus in nature on how to address questions of bringing new model organisms into biology with CRISPR tools and other kinds of genetic manipulative tools. So I would encourage you to take a look at this. It's a summary of about a $24 million investment at NSF into looking at these kinds of questions, and it's a very elegantly written article, in my opinion, summarizing the, the challenges ahead of looking at functional genomics, the challenges ahead of looking at husbandry and how to maintain these kinds of organisms, which is why I think these kinds of relationships between ourselves and USDA and NIH are really important, the expense of doing these kinds of things. So uh, to finalize the thought then, from NSF's bi biological sciences perspective, we are really in the world of functional genomics and looking forward to lots of fruitful collaborations on how to get past the, the massive challenges we've seen in the last 20 years of interpreting massively complicated sequencing data. So I'm looking forward to the meeting. Thank you very much. <laughs>